guys, so I'm here at the Robo booth, and I have with me... I'm Jerry Grauman. And Jerry, what do you do for, uh, for Robo? Well, I handle all the manufacturing for our company. I've been with the company since we began in a garage in San Diego uh, over five years ago. And we started on Kickstarter, we started with the R1 Plus, and since then we've come out with some new products, so happy to tell you about them. Yeah, so I have to say, Robo probably has the sleekest looking printers I've ever seen. I mean, the, the R1 Plus with the, you know, that enclosure on it, or not the enclosure, but just how it's housing in there. Right, yeah. I mean, it is, I have to say, one of the sleekest looking ones out there, because it doesn't have that bare bone look to it, right, you know, it yeah, actually has yeah. a little bit of, you know, up, you know that, that uh, curb appeal, for yeah, say, yeah. with it. Yeah, we wanted to give it something a little more creative, uh, a little more pleasing to the eyes, some aesthetics. So we came up with a hood that would capture the frame, capture the, the structure and the Z-axis, but also kind of look nice. So yeah. it was, we wanted to differentiate ourselves a little bit. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great seller. We have a lot of fans of the R1 Plus. Originally the R1 and then the R1 Plus, and uh, we still sell it. We support it still. I think we always will. It's one of our retro machines. It, it's kind of just near and dear to our heart. So it's uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure to support the community with that machine. Seen some amazing stuff done on yeah. the R1 Plus. Still amazing stuff done on it. All kinds of cool mods. It's really easy to work with. It's really easy to disassemble and throw other things on it when you want to. So it's been a it's been successful that way. Yeah. So so tell me, what do we have here? What's this? This is the Robo 3D R2. We came out with it about a year ago is when it started to hit the market. We did a Kickstarter before that, raised some money to get this into production. It's been on the market for about a year. Um, it's a big build volume. It's eight by eight by 10, approximately eight by eight. It's definitely 10 tall. It's just a little bit under eight. And it's got a heated bed. It's got a single direct drive extruder here at the top. It's got room for a second extruder. We'll be coming out with the dual extruder add-on. Oh, upgrade. so it doesn't have that to begin with. It's still Not single. To begin with. Okay. And that'll be out in the fall. Um, it, it's backwards compatible. Every R2 owner will be able to buy the dual extruder. I don't have pricing yet. It's not going to be that expensive. And it goes right into your machine. The electronics are ready for it already. There's a space in the back ready for it. There's another spool holder in the back already ready for it. And as you can see, it's in the top here. You, it's ready. It's plumbed basically for the next extruder. So we're working with E3D on the actual hot end for the dual extruder. Oh, so running legit E3D equipment in here? Yeah, we will be, yes. Okay. Yeah, right now it doesn't it doesn't come stock with an E3D, but the dual extruder will basically have an E3D on it. Okay. So I see we have you know these acrylic panels on the side and we've got a door in the front, but we're not closed in the top. Do we see any issues with like heating and like if you're, because obviously you're going to try and print ABS with this because it's yeah. mostly enclosed. Are there any issues with the top being open? I, I haven't heard any issues other than you'll still smell the ABS if you're printing, but yeah. it handles ABS really well. People, For some people that are power printers that we talk to all the time, this is their ABS machine. They love to print ABS on this machine. So as far as we know, and we've printed plenty of ABS on this machine, there's really no issues with, with being exposed to the top. Yeah, so, so what's the price point of this? Uh, this sells retail for $14.99. You'll catch some specials around the holidays. Uh, there's, you know, there's always something. We'll bundle something with filaments. We have uh, an exciting um, company that we're we're basically acquiring that is uh, an education curriculum company. So we're going to come out with bundles with education curriculum in this machine. So the pricing varies, but. Standardly, fourteen ninety nine. And then, so are you guys going to stick with the filament that you currently have already? Are you guys still going to be providing filament? Yeah, we still we still provide filament. Uh, we mainly provide PLA. It's just one of the best sellers. We have ABS as well. Uh, we're looking at other options, and there's a lot of great filament out there. But uh, we're not a filament focused company, so we don't put a lot of our resources on what filament we want to incorporate into our line. PLA, ABS, try to get some nice colors, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so I, I've tested out your carbon fiber, which I absolutely loved. It printed fantastic. I have some of the scented. I haven't printed yeah, I it yet, but I, 
I do have it. I think I have a uh, strawberry, yeah. um, but I haven't gone around to print that yet. Um, so the one other thing I have to ask you, because it's on everybody's mind, the bent lead screw. Are we beyond that now? Has yeah. that been rectified? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I actually am a little bit responsible for that because I do the manufacturing and um, we, we have a packaging design with this machine that we drop tested before we shipped. We, our partner, our manufacturing partner is Foxconn. People know about Foxconn. They make all kinds of products, yep. not to mention the Apple products. Um, so we took it to their, their drop testing laboratory before we went live with this machine. We did all kinds of drop testing. Didn't notice any problems with the lead screw. And then uh, we sent a few units to Joel Telling and he had had that issue. It's it's a minor issue. We've we have a small percentage of customers that experience that. But what Joel Telling's case told us, taught us really about the uh, bent lead screw was the particular kind of drop that was was partially or possibly causing the bend and we've home in on the problem we've got a really good solution for it we've added a small brace to the bottom of the lead screw oh, down underneath the plate but really yeah underneath you, you can't see it it's it's totally not exposed yeah. but it just supports one of the brackets underneath um, and we've added some more foam to the box in shipping if it arrives and it's had some rough handling the kind of foam that we're adding is called EPE it's a it's a like a reboundable okay, yeah, yeah. pillowy more, more like open cell type yep okay. and it and it compresses and re and rebounds and um, that's and then we've done some really brutal drops ourselves uh, drops that we, we even actually took this to the UPS lab and had them drop it and we got their test oh, wow. schedule and they do a 36 inch drop just once or twice during their test regime and so we used that as our standard drop and we took our machine, packaged it up as it comes packaged from the factory and dropped it on every face, every edge, every corner from 36 inches up. And and looked at the results. So we have done some really thorough, brutal drops on our machine. And I'm happy to say, and I'm confident to say that the lead screw bend, although it was rare, uh, it almost can't happen anymore. So that's excellent to yeah. hear. That really is. Like I said, because uh, then that's on everybody's mind. I had a couple people here ask me just yeah. recently. You know, hey, you're going to talk to Robo. What are they going to say? You know, and again, Joel being, you know, what the one of the largest channels out there. Everybody, if you're in 3D printing, you know about him. So it's good to see you guys have taken this, you know, and, and actually moving onward to yeah. make sure that doesn't happen anymore. And I'm actually, I didn't catch you at first when you said drop. You literally meant drop the printer in the oh, box. Yeah. Yes. I didn't, I didn't catch that at first, but yeah. then you're like 36. I was like, yeah. He actually means drop yeah. the printer. Yeah, yeah, fully packaged, of course. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah. No, hey, let's see how it goes. <laughs> but we drop it from waist high, and every face, so six different faces, twelve different edges, and whatever the math is, we've a lot, it yeah. on corners, edges, faces, and uh, we've done vibration tests as well. The Foxconn with the vibration test is isn't actually that brutal. The the big brutal thing is when guys are throwing it and yeah, uh, heave it into the truck or throw it up onto someone's porch yeah. or something like that it, which it, no one can control i mean it's not it's your a fault crazy, it's a crazy world i think some other countries shipping companies are a little bit more gentle with packaging but and uh hustle and bustle of the united states these things get thrown around they got to make their deadlines we got to get their the shipment too so we are the onus is on us to we're aware of that we have designed our packaging to handle that, and we're we're feeling really good about it now. Great. So, uh, so I guess I mean, it's just what Robo3D.com, where we can find these printers at. Yeah, absolutely, Robo3D.com. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. But yep, Robo3D. That's where. You, that's all you need to know. All right. Well, you know, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. You know, again, we're all real interested to see how this turns out. You know, in the future. So, thank you for your time. All right. Thanks. Thank you.